Hello and welcome to Chronically Overdressed. I'm Christine, the Glambassador. Hey everyone. So I did a turban tutorial a couple of years ago and I thought it was time to update it. I've learned a few new techniques and I thought I would share that with you today. follow me on Instagram you'll know that I wear turbans quite often and when I first started wearing them I really kind of relegated them to covering my sponge roller set or wearing them on bad hair days or days that I just didn't want to do my hair but over the last few years I've actually started to incorporate um, turban wearing into my style just on a regular basis I probably wear a turban twice a week now and it's, I wear it for the actual fashion side of it that I, I kind of wear it as a hairstyle, but it also helps to preserve my set. So I don't actually have to use product on my hair. It's not out in the elements. It's not, you know, hitting the wind and, and the humidity. And it's, I've really kind of embraced wearing a turban just for my style. So I get asked a lot about the fabric and the sizing of the scarves that I use. And to be honest, I have every kind of fabric you can imagine and I have different sizes of scarves. Um, so as far as fabric is concerned, I have silk scarves and kind of light cotton scarves. I have wool, like this is really actually a thick wool scarf and microfiber, nylon. Um, so yeah, I, I, there's no, not a scarf that's off the table for me. I will say that the silkier scarves, like satin, silk, or even sometimes nylon, um, don't tend to stay on my hair very well. They, they like to slip off. So either securing with a bobby pin or the way that I actually put my hair back is is really going to help me with creating a ridge for the scarf to set on and so it doesn't actually like to 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 slide off my head um but yeah at pretty much any 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 fabric is fine some are going to lend themselves better to uh, to other styles um and the sizing too the sizing is going to depend on what what style you can do as far as sizing is concerned, um, it it's kind of very. I tend to have a big head, so uh, I like lo longer scarves, larger scarves. So the smallest for me, like the regular, just kind of bandana, um, and I actually think this is even a little bit bigger than a normal bandana. This is um, 25 inches by 25 inches square. And that's, the, that's probably the smallest that I would even be able to go. I could not wear this over my rollers. I would only be able to wear this over my regular hair. Um, and I also do have a lot of hair, so that take that into consideration as well. So if I'm wearing rollers, I definitely need a larger scarf so I have more um, area to cover. But generally, if it's a vintage scarf, that I get at thrift stores, estate sales, antique shops, anywhere I can find them. Um, so this one is 35 inches by 35 inches. And that's a really good, same with this one, that is a really good size for me. It's, um, it's enough to cover my whole head and to have enough of the tails there so I can do um, the rosettes and, and anything else that I'm working with. I do have a lot of these kind of longer cotton scarves that I got. Some of them I got at Primark and some, I mean, these are like super long, but 
these are, so these are 72 by 36 inches. Sorry, I've got everything written right here on my piece of paper. Um, and these are great because I can wear, I can use them long like this, or I can cut them in half and create basically a, a square, which is what the rest of the regular um, vintage scarves are going to be a, a pretty much a square. So I really like these a lot. Um, again, I got some at Primark. I, a lot of these, I found a vendor, just a street vendor in Rome and in Paris that were just selling scarves. In Europe, everybody wears scarves. So I bought a bunch of these in different colors, different, um, different patterns, and they really work the best for me. But like this one here, this is, like I said, it's a, it's a thicker kind of a wool scarf. Um, and it has the little danglies and everything. Um, but I love wearing this. I really do. It's thicker. I can only do certain styles with it because it, you know, becomes a little bit bulky, but it works really, really well. And of course, during the winter time, it helps keep your head warm. Um, the microfiber, these are great because, oh, sorry, not microfiber, jersey. <laughs> these, these jersey uh, fabrics are really great because they have some stretch to them. Uh, again, these are not the type that I would wear over my rollers just because I don't want it to be super tight. I don't want to squish my rollers down. But these, uh, these jersey kind of uh, fabrics are really good for, for tying a turban as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The, um, as far as sizing is concerned, it's gonna be different for everybody, but I think if you stay in the kind of 32 inches to, you know, 32 to 36 inches, um, and as long as you can somewhat make it a square, uh, I do have some that I cannot make into a square, and that's when I'll just do kind of the headband turban. Um, it's not really a turban, it's really a headband. Um, and that doesn't cover my whole head, it just kind of, it just covers the back end, but you've, you've got a lot more to work with on the top. So honestly, if you see a scarf that you like, just get it, and I'm sure you can figure out how to wear it. If it's not gonna be a headscarf, you can easily wear it around your neck, or you know, kind of like an as an ascot. Um, so there's, there's ways to do it. Don't walk away from a scarf if uh, you, know, you don't have your tape measure and you're not exactly sure how big it's gonna be. I'm sure you can figure something out. So as far as buying scarves, again, uh, thrift stores, estate sales, antique shops, Etsy, um, street vendors if you can find them, Primark, I'm sure Target has a bunch. Um, you know, you can really find them anywhere and uh, you're gonna, you know, if you're looking specifically for vintage scarves, then yeah, thrift stores, estate sales, antique shops, Etsy, eBay, um, you can find them, but you know, I found them for 50 cents and I found them for, you know, five bucks, but you can, you can pretty much find them anywhere. I have a vast selection of different colors and prints and textures. I like to have variety in my style. So, um, you know, if you, if you notice that you have a color in your wardrobe that you wear a lot, maybe start off with just finding a few uh, few scarves that would complement those colors. It's another thing that you can either color coordinate or you can use uh, complementary colors to, you know, to bring out your outfit with, with whatever scarf you're using. So the way that I do my hair when I do, usually when I do a turban, if I don't have my hair up in rollers, um, I'm gonna show you that as well. And, but there's so many different ways that you can, you can actually have your hair styled. Uh, if you're trying to preserve your curls, if you have your hair set and you really wanna preserve your curls, I just really recommend putting all of your hair up into a hair net. 
and then putting the uh, the turban on over that that's going to help to preserve your curls it gives the the turban or, or scarf a little something to hold on to because you have the hairnet on there um, and if you need to you can secure it with a couple of bobby pins um, i usually do them right here or you can do kind of a crisscross here in the back um, if you don't like the look of bobby pins, you can hide them right in here. Um, to me, that's not nearly as secure. It doesn't feel as secure as right here. Um, but most of the time, because of the way that I twist my hair in the back, I really don't need to, to put bobby pins. But if, you know, if your hair is really silky, if you, um, if you haven't set it, you don't have anything for the hair, um, the scarf to actually hold on to, then a couple of bobby pins might be, might be useful. Okay, so let's get started. So start with just giving your hair a quick brush through, then part it down the middle in the back, bring it forward, and just start rolling, start twisting your hair off to the side. You can secure it with a little uh, duckbill clip if you wish or just set it aside if it stays pretty well. Do the same with the other side. Just keep twisting. Make sure you get all of your hair in that twist. Then bring that around the back and just secure it with a couple of bobby pins. I like to put them in in a crisscross pattern. It really helps to secure the bobby pins. And making sure that your hair is still twisted, go ahead and bring the other side around and secure with two bobby pins on that side as well. And that's it. Now you've created a ridge that your turban will actually adhere to. For this style, make sure that you start with a square scarf. You'll fold it as if you're going to make a triangle but don't match up the ends. You want a little bit of room in between the two. Place the long end along the ridge of the back of your hair and take the tails, bring them forward. Make sure that back is really nice and secure. It's, it's where you want it to be. Make one knot. Pull it tight. Then flip that front tail, including the little, the little tail in front of it, flip that back and then make a knot in front of both of those tails. Then you'll bring that long tail in front and then you're going to tuck it under the knot this starts to create the rosette pattern. Once that front part is all tucked in, take your two sides, make one knot behind that rosette, and then go ahead and start to spread out that those tails on the side, especially if you have a really nice scarf that has a great detail to it. You can spread this out and just tuck it in on the side there. Once you have everything tucked in, you can go ahead and start just pulling out the, the rosettes around to see if you like a little bit more height, a little bit more volume. Just keep adjusting it until it's where you want it to be. We're 
we're starting with another square scarf. Fold the ends together to make a triangle. Bring the long end around the back of your head. Bring the tails up, make one knot. Make sure it feels secure, but don't tug on it too hard. You want a little bit of space here. With the front tail down, make another knot behind. Then bring that front tail and tuck it in into those knots. Now if you've not pulled too hard, you should have two little pockets and those side tails can just be tucked right in there. If you can't find the pockets, that means that you've actually tied the turban a little too tight and you might have to start again. This scarf is 72 inches long and I folded it in half to where it's about 32 inches or so. Bring the tails forward, make one knot, and if your scarf is a little bit short like mine was, go ahead and make sure that that top part gets tucked under. Pull those tails nice and tight so it's very secure. Now bring the tails behind that first knot and make another knot. And here, just tuck that into the little pocket that uh, is created on the side. Here's where you can actually get very creative. You can tuck this in around that back knot. You could tuck it in on the other side. I wanted to leave a little space to put a hair flower. Just have fun with it. Start with another square scarf that you've folded into a triangle. Bring the sides up making sure that you tug that front part down nice and secure and make one knot. Take the first side and you're actually going to wrap behind that bow and pull it through like a normal bow and just adjust it. Make sure that it's nice and tight. Mm -hmm. 
Now for this front tail, you want to make sure that it's as flat as possible. And go ahead and tuck that in behind the knot. And just go ahead and adjust the bows how you like. I like to tuck in those little ends just to give it a cleaner look. This scarf is 72 inches long and I have folded it in a way that doesn't cover the back of my head. But this is just going to be a, a headband. So go ahead and place it along the back. Bring the tails forward and make one knot just off to the side. I like to line it up with my part. going to tie two knots, making sure it's nice and secure. Twist the end and then tuck it into the side band there. Since this side is a little bit longer, I'm going to start twisting it and then make a knot in that tail. Then simply tuck the tail into the side of the headband. If you have done the rolling technique for your hair, you can actually start to roll that headband into the hair. This helps to secure everything and just make a cleaner look. This one starts with your hair down and go ahead and just, you're actually parting the whole front section of your hair, however you wish to part it. Uh, my hair's already parted on the side, so this was the easiest way for me. Go ahead and start bringing everything forward, making sure it's all brushed and towards the front of your head. Gather all of your hair together into a front ponytail. Gather all of that hair into a bun-sized hairnet and secure it with a bobby pin towards the back. This style can also be done with bumper bangs or you can use a curly hair piece.
take your long scarf, again this is another 72 inch scarf, bring it around the back, under your hair, and bring it up and over and tie it into a knot right behind that fringe area. Knot it two more times. Start twisting the ends and just tuck it in however you wish. Thanks again for watching and remember to like and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on my blog, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. All of the links are in the description below. I'll see you soon. Bye.